Hi, I'm international publicist Michelle Tennant Nicholson. This is my health blog here at YouTube, which I've been keeping now since 2011. And I have a treat for you. As you know, recently, um, in the past few years, I've developed uh, my memoir. I haven't published it yet, but I've told you about it. And I also write over at uh, Psychology Today, writethetrauma.org is a link that you can easily remember to get to those articles over at Psychology Today in a blog called Mental Injury is Not Mental Illness. And the journey of writing my memoir about incarcerating a pedophile when I was uh, 17 years old um, has really brought me some really lovely relationships, including my new friend, Pamela Pine. Pamela, say hello to everybody. Hello, and thank you so much for having me on your blog, Michelle. I really appreciate it. And I'm really excited about, about the possibility of working together in a whole host of ways. Yeah, I am too. And and so just, just so that everybody else can be included in what we're trying to generate here, please tell us a little bit about your nonprofit and about who you are. Absolutely. Uh, Stop the Silence was originally founded. I founded Stop the Silence way back. I started working on this issue of child sexual abuse in the year 2000 as a result of information that came across my desk from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, or CDC. And I started learning. I, I didn't know anything frankly, about child sexual abuse, the numbers that it affected, the impact and outcomes that it had. And I started reading. And as soon as I started reading, I couldn't stop reading. And I was amazed at the fact that I had gone through a lot of education in public health without one course in childhood trauma, a lot of education without yeah. one course in childhood trauma. I don't know if that's changed today, but this was only a little over 20 years ago, so not a very long time ago. And I started asking my colleagues as well whether they had had any background in this and not, not a one, okay? Uh, and I said, given the numbers, more than so one- let's, I- let's, let, let's just pierce in because that's the thing that's like, I wanna really sear into everybody's brain. Let's talk about the numbers. Do, what, do you, what are the statistics, Pamela? Mm-hmm unbelievable more than one out of four girls and about one out of six boys in the u.s alone are sexually abused before the time that they are 18 years old now if you look at what that comes out to be in terms of the impact the outcomes not only on the child the adolescent they become or the adolescent that is victimized and the adults that they become the effect on them is neurological psychological physical and disease wise in terms of the impact of the body but that not only affects them it affects their families it affects their 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 communities it affects their societies it affects nations it costs this country just in, in case that that people out there are numbers people it costs this country billions, tens of billions of dollars a year in cleanup just on child sexual abuse alone, not even talking about the other adverse childhood experiences, just on child sexual abuse. And as we know, there is also an out, the outcomes affect uh, the, the uh, affect chronic disease and also affect even early death. Now, the numbers we know of adult survivors of child sexual abuse in the United States alone is around probably at, at, a, at, a, at, a, um, at a low estimate, 50 to 55 million people. 50 to 55 million people, adult survivors today in the United States. When you start looking around the world and how this affects us all, the effect is enormous. If it's about one out of five on average children, boys and girls uh, in the United States affected by the time they're 18. That's true for Europe. The same numbers in Europe. We see the same numbers in Europe and we see similar numbers around the world. So there was something that you told me about your, your sister was a therapist. You neither one, like she treated people that this affected, but um, you personally, um, aren't a survivor. Like I'm like, I was sexually assaulted at the age of eight. 
Um, that to me is really fascinating because most people that I speak to are like, oh yeah, that happened to me. And that's why I've mm. you know, gotten really committed. But you are really committed from a public health perspective. I am. And the gaps that, that fall in with the education of our firefighters, our doctors, our nurses and so forth. So that's really what the nonprofit um, uh, Stop the Silence, which is under Institute on Violence, Abuse and Trauma, right? Correct. We we ran as uh, as a standalone nonprofit, international nonprofit based in Maryland for 20 years. And then in January of 2021, uh, Sandy Capuano Morrison, CEO of IVAT, Bob Geffner, Robert Geffner, who's the president um, and founder um, of, of IVAT, uh, we started talking a couple of years before that. And I said, you know, we said, we agreed, Stop the Silence should have a home. And so Stop the Silence, which was Stop the Silence, Stop Child Sexual Abuse, is now Stop the Silence, a department right under my finger here. Oh, yeah, Department of the Institute on Violence, Abuse, and Trauma. But wait, so talk to us about that. Is that a federal department or how does that work inside our... No, I, I've had is a 501c3 nonprofit organization. And um, Stop the Silence is one of 10 departments in IVAT. And then you've got another on your um, screen here. You've got the University of Applied Research and Development. And then what's that about? So the University of Applied Research and Development is actually based in the UK. I was doing a training um, in 2018 and 19 in New Zealand. And one of the presenters that we had on the program who were presenting to government officials, nonprofit organizations, service providers, educators, et cetera, et cetera, one of the presenters' husbands is the head of the University of Applied Research and Development. Wow. And she introduced me to him. And Craig, Craig Hansen and I started talking about the need for a comprehensive program to educate all the people who have anything to do with child protection and treatment and, uh, and, and mitigation. And so we decided to put together um, a certificate to master's degree program online, affordable, at your own pace uh, uh, program in, in child protection. So it's a certificate which takes three months or less to do. And then you can apply those uh, credits in the US or if you're in the UK or anywhere else in the world that uses the UK system points towards the master's degree, which is also online, also affordable. And we also, tailor the cost of the program depending upon the income levels of the country's people. So in the US, it's a price. In most of Africa, it's a different price altogether. We have a vision literally to educate the world. That's I just, I just love, I just am so grateful to meet you and to be speaking with you because I've really you know, when I started to write my memoir, I started to, in about 2018, 2019, it was after a young woman um, that I know in my life, but she knew what had happened to me. Um, and she's about uh, 30 years younger than I am. And she called me suicidal because she had been assaulted and she just wanted to know, does it get any better? You know, and I really, I thought about that. I was like, I have a, a blessed life. I have a great career, a wonderful husband um, hobbies, you know, uh, I still struggle with chronic pain. And I, that's part of what you were discussing is like, you know, the traumatized brain, there's some, the struggle is real. You know, mm -hmm. you're not alone, right? We are not alone. And for me, the whole process, you know, by the way, she got through the night and she did not commit suicide. And she started to integrate some of the therapies that had been successful for myself, like, EMDR, personal development courses, um, you know, the list goes on and on and on. But I, you know, one of the things that I thought to my, and I said to my husband, I said, I've got to write down what I've done that's been so successful for me that I kind of just fell into haphazardly because of my own, uh, my parents really taught me to love 
education. So ongoing education was something that I came by because of my family of origin. Uh, we just happened to um, move in. You know, my dad was a military guy and we moved in next door to a family of pedophiles. I mean, the, the mother, the brothers, the, I mean, it was just, you know, it was unfortunate, but we just moved in next door to um, the families who were, you know, ill with this. So I think about like, what am I, like my biggest dream in the world is to have a trauma-informed society. I dream about the day that when someone's coming in hot at you and yelling at you, that we don't respond the same way, but instead we say and hold their hand or have them just stop for a moment and say, my goodness, what's happened to you? That this is, that, that you're acting this way. Like, what's, how can I help you? Like, why, what's happened right. in your life that has co- had you, express you know these types of um behaviors and and communication styles and whatnot whether it may not even be from a child sexual assault maybe it's from you were in war and you're suffering from complex ptsd because of some type of war environment or some type of other really extreme uh, overwhelming experience in your life so for me to have somebody who's already put together a curriculum, you know, bravo, Pamela. So people can actually take this today. Yeah, the in it's fact, amazing. In fact, um, the the certificate uh, program is up and going. We're actually going into our second round semester, uh, and people could sign up. Literally, sign up um, and take this. It starts. Well, tell people how to do that. Where do they go. Stop the silence, or what is it? No, they go to uh, https colon okay. forward slash forward slash i that centers i v a t c e n t e r s dot org forward slash stop uh-huh. stop dash the dash silence, and they will find out how to sign up or express interest. There you go. That's the new book. And if you scroll down, you'll find all the other stuff. There you go. Postgraduate certificate towards master's in child trauma and protection. Okay. And then, um, but if somebody, they if they already have a master's degree, does this count toward continuing education units and things of that nature? Absolutely. In fact, okay. it could be up there. If it's not, we have to uh, get it up there. Uh, in fact, I told them just the other day to amend it. Um, so that, yes, we have a whole mess of CEs available yes. as a result of being a part of the program. And uh, this- Okay, per- here's the credits. Here it is. Yeah, here it is. It's um, So how I got here, you guys, is um, I clicked here for course information. I clicked this first button, and then it brought me to uh, this document that I can download here. So this has everything. And the accreditation that you see on the bottom there, yeah, is all, uh, you know, who who is already accrediting us. And there might even be a more updated version of this uh, at this okay. point. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we have a whole, we have about seven, eight different major organizations who are allowing, um, you know, like a APA, you know, and various uh, social workers organizations and um, legal organizations and et cetera. So- Well, talk to me about this. There's a this presenter right here because th- he's a big deal. Oh, Dr. Vincent Felitti is amazing. Dr. Vincent Felitti uh, is the originator along with Dr. Anda uh, they were working with uh, Kaiser Permanente, and it was fascinating, really, in a sad sort of way, but still fascinating. And they had uh, developed research uh, with uh, um, morbid, morbidly obese women, and they were looking at their backgrounds and trying to understand their sphere, so to speak. And when they compiled all their research statistics, what they found was a common denominator almost you know, through, throughout the population that they were working with. Their common denominator was child sexual abuse. Wow, are you serious? And they looked at the data actually, and they said, this has got to be wrong. 
what's this about? And so they opened up the 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 database you know they opened up the participants the number of the participants and it grew to over 17,000 people so no small database here no continued their research and what they found was that there are a host of childhood experiences that are major causes of trauma and so they developed a scoring of one to 10. Some people use 12 at this point, but one to 10 ACEs. Okay, Ad I've heard of ACEs, right? Adverse childhood experiences. And ACEs are comprised of child sexual abuse, child physical, uh, physical abuse, neglect, psychological abuse, a parent incarcerated, a parent or parents using illicit drugs and alcohol to a, a, a you know to to a, a malfunctioning state, um, um, domestic violence. Okay, so those are eight of them. I'm you know blanking on the other two, but they developed a scoring system to look at what happens, for example, with cigarette smoking with one ace. What happens with cigarette smoking with two aces? What happens with cigarette smoking with three aces? And the more aces that you have had in your background, the higher addiction rates you have, the higher of, of all of those, of, of uh, you know, illicit drugs, of, of, of cigarette smoking, of alcohol, um, the more likely you are to uh, develop chronic disease, the more likely you are to um, be actually have have a, a poverty in in your in 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 your situation current situation wow. because and that makes sense you know the poverty thing people say what's that about right well if you are depressed or you are anxious or you have other psychological problems and that's an outcome as well, psychological problems, anxiety, depression, et cetera, et cetera, and other, you know, bipolar disorder, personality disorders, all of that are affected by, by childhood trauma. And the more of these kinds of things that you have that you're carrying with you into adulthood, the less you're able to show up well for school the less able you're well to less you're well able to show up for work and the more problems overall you're going to experience in society you're going to have a harder time of it well and this is where the intersection of your career of being a public health professional and then looking at this tremendous gap comes to bear really mm -hmm. as you look at it from a macro view of how we can really like help so what are you hoping for with, um, you just want every professional to be educated on child uh, like this? Or, I mean, what what are you hoping for? Uh, well, there is a section um, in, in the master's actually portion that we go through the various modalities of treatment for children as well as adults. Oh, That's wow. Okay. But the, the, the beginning of the, in the certificate portion of all of this, what are ACEs? What is the outcome of ACEs? What is the impact of ACEs? How widespread are they? What's, what is grooming? How does that process occur? We all know people who have gone for help to therapists and social workers, and this is not to take away from the field. I'm not denigrating the field. But many people who are really have their heart in the right place really don't understand the issue of trauma. And they are not providing the kind of input and guidance and therapeutic capability because they don't completely understand it, right? If they understood it much better, they could help to a much greater degree. And that's true of every profession, you know, therapists and social workers and psychologists, obviously. But what about doctors? Are they even asking the parents or anybody else, the caregiver, whether this child has experienced trauma so that they can get them early the kind of help 
that we know they're going to need. Let me ask you this. So if somebody's already in a profession and they're working, uh, why would they invest in this? Well, because they may not have the understanding that they truly need to do the job that they want to do and could do if they had a better understanding of the background and and the, the details that are a part of a full and true understanding of the issue. And maybe their maybe their employer might even pay for this, right? Are you finding that that's happening? That is what we're is, is happening. We we give a certificate. It's a formal certificate from UARD and Stop the Silence. You know, IVAT. We give a formal certificate, and we also give a transcript. And you can take that certificate to your boss, or if you're trying to get a job, and say, "I have a specialty. I have a certificate specifically in child protection." And that you know, some if, with some people. They're using it to get into the school system. They can show this. I, I have a background in this and I'd like to train your teachers. I'd like them to understand. I'd like to change your principal. Um, I'd like to change train train your counselor, you know, the person who's in the school who's dealing with the kids all the time. What do you look for? How do you help these kids? What if you see something? What do you do? You know? And, you know. Goodness yeah. me, we've been riddled with this stuff in school. Yeah. And 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 what would happen if true if schools were actually capable and trained? You know, I'm, I'm gonna tell you a story. Can I tell you a story? Of course. Early, early on. Early, early on. Uh way back. This was when I I started working on this before the Catholic Church scandal hit. All right. When it hit, I went to the Catholic Church and I said, you're getting terrible PR, understandably. But if the Catholic Church starts supporting um, ways to prevent and treat and mitigate this issue, you can help yourselves become a little bit more of the good guy, right? Right. All right. So they they didn't exactly first understand it. And and so so I what I said to them, Michelle, was that listen, I uh I was just I, I'm 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 having trouble doing the programs because there's simply not enough support and not enough money. And I just got off the phone, and this is all true. I got off. I just got off the phone with the FBI, and I told them that I was really having trouble getting to the Catholic Church and trying to find a, a collaboration, a cooperation, so that it helps them, it helps the children, it helps the adult, it helps everybody. And and I said to her. I said, and the FBI, and I'm saying, you know, the FBI to the FBI, we, we don't have enough support. And the FBI says to me, call the Catholic Church. And so I'm telling this story to the woman who was hired to deal with the PR for the Catholic Church. And I hear this almost inaudible gasp. It was like, you know, it was really fast. And it was, I could hear her thinking, oh my God, not again, you know? And and the the FBI person, I said to her, I told I told the FBI people that I had tried to get to the Catholic Church, but I couldn't. And he said, go 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 to the papers, call the call the Washington Post. Now I'm telling this you know this person um, from the Catholic Church this whole story, and that that of course is the last thing that she wants. And I'm telling her, and that I say the same thing to the schools. Would you rather deal with the fallout of a horrible situation, or would you rather get in front of it and protect the kids and be the good guys, right? Yeah. But we're not there yet because people are afraid of the issue. They're afraid to talk about it. They're afraid to deal with it. They're afraid of the PR fallout. They're afraid of what's going to happen 
if teachers get trained and kids get actually reported as a possible abuse case, do they even have the capability of dealing with it? If uh, say a few kids, say many kids come forward, do they have the capability? So I'm saying to everybody, get educated, put the, put the, put the processes in place, in schools, in the churches, everywhere, so that you know what you're doing and you know how to help and you are preventing a catastrophe rather than having to clean up. Well, I really, I, you know, it, did they ever purchase any programming? Because I was in a Catholic school and I actually, when I was eight, I went to my priest for help. And I, yeah. I just was told to, you know, say the rosary, you know, and pray about it. Right. Exactly. And it's like when I tell that story, people are like horrified. Right. right. And I don't want to, you know, he, that was, he was a good priest, that priest. And I don't, you know, it's also very difficult to understand what do you do in confession? So I don't want people to get like now, like, you know, even hating the Catholic church more. It wasn't the best case for me. And, you know, I didn't get help. Um, I'm, I don't know what the solution is. I know that it would have been great for that entire staff to have been trained. They probably would have seen the signs in me. You know what I mean? Like what, I, how I was acting out and how I was, um, you know, coping with what was happening to me. I mean, yeah. at this point, Michelle, I'll tell you, I probably know thousands. I've been doing this for 23 years. I'm originally an international public health specialist. And then I got appalled basically and, and started working on this. And it's now 23 years later. And I probably know thousands of survivors. And I've heard, I couldn't count the number of stories. Uh, and and what, what can make me sad truly in an instant is the fact that I have seen so many behaviors from survivors that are actually coping mechani mechanisms. Mm. You know? Vincent Felitti, in fact, has a great phrase, great phrase. What if we recognize what people do as a normal reaction to abnormal circumstances rather than blaming the victim. Right. What would happen if we start looking at it that way? What would happen, as you said before, when we were talking before, what would happen if I reached out to you and say, are you okay? Rather than what the hell is wrong with you? Right. Right. And, and so I think we need to flip this and recognize that probably the behaviors that we are seeing in people that look like maladaptive behaviors in terms of our society are actual coping mechanisms that people are using just to survive. And one of the things I wanna share with people who are watching this too is that, you know, my big aha when I was doing my memoir, writing my memoir and the research I was doing, um, you know, not, about my own story, but about where we had come in terms of uh, a society, you know, because, you know, by the time I was writing my, I, I didn't even know that I officially had complex PTSD, right? Until somebody said, oh, you know, the term now is, right? Because things progress. Well, one of the things that um, I learned too, which has kind of been my hallmark now is, and it really is freeing when you think about I don't have, I have a mental injury, not a mental illness. And when somebody said that to me for the first time, or I, I read it in one of the, of the books I was reading, I thought that's right, right? It's just like a scar tissue that I have from a mountain biking or whitewater kayaking trip that I've taken. And that can heal. And that also gives people hope. And I think that that's really what's important is that, um, you know, that, People have often said to me in my lifetime, what happened to you automatically gives you a mental illness. And, you know, I used to think like, well, you know, it, it, I, it's just what happened to me when I was eight. And is there anything wrong with being mentally ill anyway? 
right? Like there's all these questions, right? That we have about people putting labels on us. And I think at the end of the day, like just understanding that you're just a, a human being who's doing right. the best that you can with the genetics and the brain and the experiences and whatever adaptation that your body has made from those experiences, that's pretty freeing. Yeah. You know, no matter yeah. what, even if I am crazy, right? <laughs> even like, so what, right? Um, I'm in that club. So that's all right. right. <laughs> crazy is, uh, you know, I always like to look at a brilliant mind, that movie, a brilliant mind, right? Like, oh, you're at a, you know, you have an adaptation in one area that gives you another edge in another area, right? So it all goes together. Before we end, tell us quickly about your book. Yeah, the book is called Stop the Silence, Thriving After Child Sexual Abuse. And it is a collaborative book with 23 international authors uh, it's the uh, nine different countries. Um, they include the United States and Guam and uh, New Zealand and Zambia and Mexico and um, Cyprus. And I might have left out a couple here and there, but but it's a book that provides the stories of all these people. I have my own story after all. Part of it is made up and part of it is drawn from from life experience. But so it's their stories, our stories. And then at the end of every single chapter is a, a piece of it called the practice. And every one of us provide ideas, suggestions, what helped us get through uh, whatever it is we were going through, what others might try. So you have literally 23 people from around the world providing guidance to help one other survivors further heal and two to give ideas to practitioners social workers psychologists therapists as to what might work with the population that they're working with it's available it's a bestseller um congratulations Thank you. It's a, it's available on Amazon. And if you just go to Amazon and type in Stop the Silence, Thriving After Child Sexual Abuse book, it will come up and it is available in hard copy. It is available as a download and it is available as an audio file. That's the one I got. I got the audio book. I just love, I feel like somebody's just reading and taking care of me, you know? I just and love she, that whole experience with Audible. Um, I'm just going to... Uh, you already have everybody knows the um website that we've already talked about but if we just pull up the just so you all can see the um the front page here with the dragonfly it's a dragonfly right why, why did you choose a dragonfly yeah, the dragonfly around the world is symbolic for healing change transformation and moving forward and we went to uh, um, uh, Sutton, um, Strat Sutton, Stratton, Stratton, Stratton. Go, go to the first page for one second and I'll uh, read her name. Um, Not uh, the forward. Okay, hold on. No, no let's see. That's okay. Yeah. Here, chapter one. Hold on. We're going to get there. We're going to get there. Okay, the dragon. Introduction. Introduction. Oh, that's, that's my first, that's my story. That's the first story. Okay. Entire page and a half, actually, about the dragonfly and why the dragonfly. Oh, yeah, we don't have it there. Okay. Yeah, but um, Stratton um, on the cover is her, uh, is the, uh, is the, the artist, that dragonfly painting. Yes. Is a color. And I, I contacted, um, you know, I've got her name right here. Okay. Uh, her name um, is one second because I want I want to give her credit because it's such it it was it was it was such a kind thing that she did um, Sinclair there we go um, Sinclair Stratton and she has her own website okay uh, with watercolors of animals and other other um, other other you know, other pieces, parts of nature. And I went to Sinclair Stratton, just, I emailed her and I said, hey, Sinclair, you know, we were writing this book and it's such a beautiful picture and it's, it's such beautiful painting and it's perfect, you know, in terms of yeah. our 
symbol? And she said, yep, go ahead and use it. Just give me credit. And I said, fantastic. So it's it's on our book. It's it's on our T-shirts. We've got Thriver T-shirts. And you can also get those off of our, our website, um, the stop, uh, you know, uh, ivatcenters.org uh, slash stop dash the dash silence website. Um, and they're gorgeous t-shirts and it has this big, beautiful picture and it just says, I'm a thriver. Um, yeah, if you scroll, through the, uh, there you go. I'm a thriver. It comes in a whole mess of colors. It's really, really beautiful. It's cotton. It's very comfortable. And, you know, the thing is, is that I also took into account just in case that somebody is uncomfortable with proclaiming themselves as a survivor of child sexual abuse, I recognize that everyone, everyone is a thriver of something, right? Everyone. So you can wear that t-shirt proudly as a thri thriver of whatever you want to say you're That's a thriver. That's right. Or not answer the question at all. You know, it's just actually a really beautiful t-shirt. So, you know, we're trying to, to beef up that campaign as well. We've sold hundreds of those t-shirts, hundreds of the books. And my my goal is in the billions. So so we got a little ways to go. You do, but I just want to point out from this t-shirt, you all, look, you can also do a pullover. Right. You can also do a crew neck um, sweatshirt. That's neat how you can kind of just, you know, um, do your colors and just kind of personalize it before you purchase it. That's really neat. Yeah, they really are beautiful. I mean, I've got three. <laughs> yeah, they're they're really beautiful. Um, and I think it's a wonderful statement. Uh, and uh, the book seems to really be doing a lot of good. It has now been sent to Taiwan and to Europe and to India and to- the Oh, that's Pacific. exciting. Yeah. So, yeah, so I really highly recommend, well, I'm going to, uh, I'm all going on vacation soon and I've got the book to- um, read while I'm on vacation and I'm definitely really committed to stopping the silence. So I'm now your biggest cheerleader and I really appreciate your time with us today. Oh yeah. You know, I should show your, uh, your, uh, oh yeah, I can see that. Oh yeah. It's a dragonfly, a tattoo. Oh, me too. <laughs> hmm, there's some ideas everybody on your new tattoo. So <laughs> I love it. Thanks so much, Pamela. Any final words for you? Uh, no, just, you know, join us, join us, you know, to the extent that you're comfortable, speak out, uh, feel free to contact me. I'm at Pamela P at ivatcenters.org. Uh, if you want to uh, share information about the online education program, or if you want to take it yourself, we, we welcome you with open arms. We're starting a new semester on the 12th of September, so you could still get in if you want. Oh, great. And, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to further collaboration with uh, our gal, Michelle, here. And uh, Me too. we all can do together. Yeah. All right. Thanks so much, Pamela. Bye, everybody. And let me know if you have any questions. You can write to me and comment on this video. Talk to you soon.